When people, like when people drop some, their baby or not their baby, but <laughs> <they> drop, <laughs> drop their their pacifier or whatever, you know, they don't need to clean it off or yeah. get a new one. You just give it back to give the baby. Back. Yeah. I completely suck at growing grass. I've been trying to grow grass for eight years and I've at some points I've had it but it never lasts long and I kill it and it gets burned out or I go on vacation and I'm not here to water it and it gets fried uh, yeah this is why we're doing this my grass looks like ass so I hired Ryan from Pleasantwood Landscaping to do the uh, well to do the hard part. To be honest with you, um, very very happy with him. I'm going to link his info in the description if you happen to be in the Southern New Hampshire area. Uh, definitely worth a phone call. But uh, he laid it out, did a great job um, designing the system, and was just real smart about you know where we put the resources. So couldn't be happier. Uh, with, with him and now I just needed to get the supply lines ready and do my end of the plumbing end to get him some fresh water to work with. So what I have now is a bit of a mess. You'll see we got the main line coming off the pressure tank here and what this basically does is accumulate water from your well and there's a baffle in the center of this and it uses air on the top side. That gets compressed and that allows you to keep a nice steady pressure and doesn't cause your pump to constantly run. So that flows out through a three quarter inch line here. That line tees off down at the bottom, comes up, makes a right. So I think what we're going to do is mount everything up on the wall here. So the first step is to do something with this concrete. We got to put a, a board in place similar to this that just, you know, allows you to move things around a lot easier than trying to drill into concrete every time you need to mount something. So let's start with that. have a uh, drilled well and it gives us some beautiful water it's perfectly balanced very safe and all of that but we do get a little bit of sediment here and there and I didn't want that stuff running through the sprinkler system and it shouldn't have it run through anything really so uh, these are just a stainless steel mesh filter um, so it's totally cleanable it's not something that you have to replace and doesn't cost you anything to clean. Um, you basically just have a pass through here that you can drain or you can shut the water off and I suppose clean it manually. So I scored this guy on Amazon. I'll link it in the description if, you know, if you need one. I'm leaving this, I'm doing this on purpose because if down the road we want to change something and put in additional filters here, we always have that room now. And now we're just looping up and we'll start working on our outputs. line that you see there is the line that I just brought out from inside the basement and as you can see I've got a bit of a mess of plumbing situations going on over here um, those of you that have been subbed for a long time may remember this uh, video this was years ago um, but that is the current irrigation system that I have and, and that does all of the flower beds and uh, actually all of the pots all around the house through that system we're going to be replacing this in just so that it's all on one system and I don't have to deal with two of them when we put in these sprinklers. So for right now, I'm just going to get our main line set up and that's going to be feeding everything out here. So the hose as well as the irrigation and the flower beds is all going to come off that one line because none of that stuff is going to all be running at the same time. So it's fine. So we're going to set that up now. A 
all of this now is finished up so our old irrigation system the landscaping one for the flower pots and stuff is now tied in to our new wiring system as well as our plumbing we've got our airline here to quick connect a compressor and blow it out backflow preventer new hose set up for out here those lines are bundled up they run on down here into this one inch line that goes out and feeds the entire irrigation system from one spot so this this came out really cool I like it and it's just super easy to work with in the spring and the fall to get it running uh, really nice easy setup so pretty happy with that Just like self puncture? Yeah. So uh, basically. Wow. It's got the rubber. Okay. And you just screw it on. Pretty exciting. But it's nice. That is. Just goes, yeah, that's These awesome. make ones that were uh, white ones that were saddled that you could screw on. Yep. Um, they make other ones that have things that basically you could screw the, um, this right into it too. Oh, stuff, okay. This works. Oh, that's great. This works the best. Yeah. So then these go set to the right, so they're they're constant is to the right. So this is basically backwards. Oh, okay. Um, so so you end up uh, you grab it and pull it up and then. So then, your right is your constant, so now I have to go back a little. Okay. And then I just kind of leave it there, and then later on, when Once the water's running. running, then we'll do the plus or minus, but that right never okay. moves. Okay. Unless you twist it. I got you. So then, you're all set. So when you're doing them on a hill like this, do you put them straight, or do you put them with the angle with of the, the hill? Angle. With the angle. Yeah. Okay. We'll see how that, that works. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. it's definitely steep over there, but yeah, maybe you have to adjust those a little bit. But this hill here should be fine. Okay. But um, but obviously, as you're saying too, it's like the the uphill's gonna have a little less. The downhill's gonna go a little further. Sure, sure. But it is even. That, the hill's pretty. Yeah. Slow, pretty. Slow. It's the same. So yeah. everything should be balanced. Pretty out, steady. So. Yeah, yeah. So just kinda... I don't know. You're snow, you snow blow though, right? Uh, I do, but I also blade it as well. All right, yeah, just in case you caught yeah. it, but. I usually. You stake it. I know where it is, over. yeah. And then also, you know how it is when you have to plow that. That storm, that's, uh, it was 60 the day before. Then we got two, two feet of snow and <laughs> the ground's soft and yep. it's all mud. And you just run off the edge. Usually what I end up doing is cheating too far on this side of the driveway. Yeah, you want to get it down. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm ha my ass is hanging off and I got to tow it out. So I'm usually good to do that at least once a year. So you just basically do that 60 more times, right? 60 more times, <laughs> and then the other ones have the, uh, you know, these. So this just goes just on Just barb fitting, yeah. And yep. You can use clamps or? Yeah, the one and Oh, okay. So, yeah, cool. So so similar to like a PEC setup. Yep. Yeah. 
Nice. Yeah, that tech stuff is great. Oh, it's, it's just I so mean, much easier to do stuff. It's funny though, you talk to older people and they don't like it. They don't trust it. No, it's not, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's gonna work. You know what? Like... I didn't trust it either. Yeah. I still don't trust Even, the shark bite stuff. Really? Everyone loves those but too? But I've tried, I've got a few of them. And I, to be honest, I have not had a problem. Right. It's like, it so, doesn't seem like a, it's like, there's no way. There's no way it's, gonna, no, it's gonna, gonna leak. leak it's right? gonna leak, it's gonna leak. I mean, how many times do you sweat a pipe with copper and that leaks? Right. You know what I mean? So you see this thing, you just slide in and go, how, there's, there's no, no way. way yeah. But no, uh, well, yeah. Hey, guess what? You don't have to worry about water in the pipe. You don't have to worry Nothing. about yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, or lighting your house on fire on a tight. <laughs> after you left and, yeah. you smell something? Smell something? <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I, was, I was doing pipes earlier, it's fine. <laughs> So this is one of three valve boxes that are out in the yard and I'll take a look at one of them here. They all look pretty much the same. So what we have here is this is a three valve so this is just my backyard so we only have three systems that run this and each one of these three valves is running four heads although one of them is running five heads. Um, so these are, are pretty damn simple. It's just a solenoid valve and you have your commons all tied together and then one of these individual color ones for each of the we'll say positive but I think these are actually AC powered um, so these uh, trigger your individual valves you can manually open them there we go so you can manually open them and wait for these guys to power up off so really cool really really cool easy to service very simple um, yeah I didn't I knew nothing about this stuff as usual when we started but turns out it's actually pretty simple stuff this is the controller I decided to go with and this thing is cool it's probably the only one I could find that actually has a, a touch screen and um, gives us all kinds of really cool options here just bring it home um, it will show you basically all your data so the irrigation program each day as well as the weather and it's able to adjust the length you know, of the irrigation program on the fly based on weather so it will just fill in the gap unlike most which just measure if there was any rain and it shuts the program off this one will actually measure the amount of rain that you receive so if I want to get a half inch of rain a week I can just program that in and it will adjust the daily watering schedule along with the rain that it's pulling in from real time and supplement that to get the amount of water that I want on the ground. So it really saves you a lot of water, um, which is obviously a good thing. Um, but this isn't the only cool feature about this. I'm going to show you that next. This is a weather station that I already had and I, I, I always liked it. This is the ambient weather, uh, weather station. Um, so it gives you all of that data, but this also reports to Weather Underground as one of their local weather machines. So Weather Underground has this massive network of um, both professional and people like me, amateur idiots, with weather stations. Um, so the good news is that this reports that to Weather Underground and that irrigation controller connects to Weather Underground. So I was able to go in and select my particular weather station in order to gather data to feed the irrigation system and that's really important especially in the summer where you have these little these little um, you know summer rainstorms that pop up 
I can be getting rain here and a mile down the road they're getting nothing or the opposite can be true so you really can't trust those weather stations if you're if you're not using one that is on your property so that's where this really comes in uh, handy is is I know whether or not we got rain here or not and the irrigation system is now just as smart this is the application for that irrigation system. Now there's not a ton of data in here because we just started using it obviously, but uh, over time this will accrue a whole lot of information. Um, but what is really neat about this, uh, beyond that you, you can look at that from a week, a month, and a year. So if we look here, you can see all 12 zones and it allows you to actually go and take a physical picture of the area so that you know because I, I don't remember much but I can look at a picture and go oh that's that part um, so it lets you assign a picture to go with each one of your zones and then from here we can manually you know control and trigger these things on and off um, we have a schedule so I just set up one for the summer I'll probably set up another one for the fall with less uh, less requirements on water um, but from here you can adjust the time of each one of those that, that runs and this is just your base timing so the system will adjust the amount of minutes um, that it, it spends on each one of these things. So um, you can also adjust the order in which it actually will irrigate which is really cool so that I can start earlier in the afternoon before the sun's gone down because there's some areas of my yard that are shaded already so I can get those irrigated right away and then as the sun continues to set I can go further and further towards the front of the house um, so that we can get that irrigation done before me and my wife are you know getting ready or taking showers or you know trying to compete for water at that point so just helps to ease some pressure up off the uh, off the well system so Really cool setup there. And we'll go back and out of there. So, really cool system. Say hi to Shelby. So, I am going to cover the cost with you. As always, I think it's important to share that information and keep in mind that it varies, obviously, significantly depending upon where you are in the country. Here in the Northeast, we tend to be a little bit more expensive than the overall average. So, with that in mind, the irrigation system itself, that came to $7,000, pretty much even. Uh, the controller, the irrigation controller, was another $250. And the ambient weather station, which I already had, so technically it was free, but those run, I want to say, about $250 as well. But keep in mind that those two things combined, especially if you're on city water, um, those could easily pay for themselves within a couple of months just in in the job that they will do to save water over a conventional irrigation system there's just no comparison because a conventional system just basically when there is rain it shuts off power to the valves so that means it could have rained that morning and your system still going to run um, it could also mean that when it was supposed to run it just happened to be sprinkling a little bit and you really didn't get any real rain and the system won't run so um, i think the intelligent portion of this is is way 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 more important than trying to save you know a couple hundred bucks uh, and just getting a conventional irrigation controller so uh, with that said i'm going to link a couple of other videos that i think you might find interesting here so you can please check those out as always if you have any questions comments concerns or criticisms thrown down in the comment section below me and otherwise everybody have a great day